So in our previous video, we got a very good look at what DNA sequencing is all about. Remember, it utilizes the principle of complementary base pairing to tell us and determine, help us determine the sequence of a DNA in question. We started going over a very particular process of DNA sequencing known as dideoxy chain termination sequencing. Hopefully through steps one and two, you understand why it has this termination um, name to it. And that's all due to the fact that dideoxys are present. And those dideoxys are going to give DNA polymerase a bit of a problem because they do not possess a free 3'OH and thus terminate the sequence. Then we got these various lengths, these various colors and lengths of strands within this concoction. What we're going to do now in step three is run all of this on a polyacrylamide gel. So what we mean by run is the following. What we're going to do is that first let's establish what a polyacrylamide gel actually is. Um, polyacrylamide is basically a bunch of monomers um, uh, this is a gel consisting of these monomers that act as what is known as a molecular sieve of sorts. This is a classic, classic, classic lab technique in which we sort of sieve out um, certain things that we want and certain things that we don't want. Meaning that this is sort of like a semi-permeable membrane in that things that travel on this gel based off of what we um, put through the gel like DNA in this situation, some of the things are going to go through and some don't. That's what a molecular sieve really is. So some go through this polyacrylamide gel, so we'll say, and some, uh, well, that says go, uh, some, we'll say some don't. So some molecules will go through, some don't. This is all dependent on the composition of our polyacrylamide gel. In our situation right now, what we're going to establish is that we're going to take that those tubes of DNA, we're going to put them on this gel, we're going to run this gel through, um, let's say, an electric current of sorts, and we're going to see the following. The short strands of DNA, let's say the DNA that very early on got terminated by a dideoxy, those modified A, T, Cs, and Gs, those very short strands of the DNA that got terminated early on, just like I said, actually, because they're so short, they weigh less, and thus, they move fast through our gel. So they move faster than their, let's say, bigger strand counterparts. In addition, through this polyacrylamide gel, we have what is known as a fluorescent detector of sorts. There's a fluorescent detector available that will allow us and senses the colors that are seen based off of each chain termination. Each chain terminated with A, T, C, or G, a modified dideoxy. Each of those has a different color. Let's say each represents red, one represents red, one represents green, one represents blue, and one represents, let's say, yellow. All of these things are going to sort of combine together to give us the following ability. We're going to take all of these information, steps one, two, and three, coalesce them and combine them and use what is known as a spectrogram, which is a very nice lab equipment technique, to actually get the entire fragment sequence. Now, I myself am not really satisfied in terms of how this was explained in your notes simply because these notes do not sort of do a, a lack of justice to the way that this process is done. I highly recommend actually opening your textbook and looking at dideoxy chain termination sequencing the way that they present it. This is all in the DNA technology chapter of your textbook. And also, go on my YouTube playlist that's entitled DNA Technology. It really does a much better job than these notes do because I myself feel like many people might still be confused by this idea of, wow, how did we get all the way to the fragment sequence? I can't do it justice because it actually involves a lot of visualization. And I highly recommend looking at the YouTube playlist to get a much stronger sense of what steps one, two, and three combine and give us this entire fragment sequence. That was our end-all, be-all goal, and we've reached it. So I'm just going to conclude and move forward and sort of tell you um, one thing that your notes actually do mention is that in next generation sequencing, meaning sequencing that we do today, um, believe it or not, uh, everything that we just learned doesn't happen. 
we don't use DCTS anymore. It's actually a very long process. It's laborious. It's kind of um, uh, obsolete now. And we actually have the ability to sequence even larger um, overall sequences than 1,000 base, base pairs. So we actually sequence larger DNA molecules now because of the technology associated with it. So this is actually a very primitive technology. I really don't understand why it's taught so extensively then, but that's just my own opinion. We have to learn things sometimes that we don't want to learn. Dideoxy chain termination sequencing is a great process nonetheless. Look at the videos, look at your textbook to really emphasize what this means based off steps one, two, and three, and hopefully you'll get a much better understanding of it. And the final thing I want to state about DNA sequencing is an end-all, be-all sort of overarching purpose of the process. The purpose of this is to, um, believe it or not, this is something that's going to tie in very, very nicely with what's coming up in Biology 115, answer questions about evolutionary history. What does that mean? This is the first time we sort of mentioned this word of evolution. Basically, what you can do is, as a scientist within a lab, when you start sequencing DNA and figuring out sequences of many, many different molecules, you can compare DNA sequences between, let's say, a human and, let's say, an earlier counterpart like a chimpanzee, and literally compare protein for protein or enzyme per enzyme sequences between a chimp and a human and compare the differences, compare the evolutionary history associated within the DNA because we know for a fact that DNA is genetic blueprint. It tells us what the organism is all about. It gives us a huge amount of information and thus we can compare information between species to figure out evolutionary history. So that's it for DNA sequencing. We'll continue our discussion on DNA technology and other processes associated with DNA technology in the next couple of videos.